what was the secret of the book of Acts and where we ended before our break last time when we did the 100th anniversary, we began to see that one of the secrets of the book of Acts was the fact that they were preaching the word. And that is what we want to do focus on today. It's, the book of Acts is not just a book full of Acts, it was a book full of preaching, full of sermons. 25% quarter of that book are actually sermons. So we want to ask ourselves, what was the secret of the Acts? Let's hear from the mouth of Peter himself, one of the foremost apostles. In fact, one of the foremost two apostles whose Acts were specifically recorded for us in the book of Acts. And I want to read this one verse from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, verse 4. You remember the incident that led to this verse. There was, there was unrest among the disciples in the early days. This is what Peter said, and I'm going to read it in three different translations. First, from the book of King James Version, Acts chapter 4, verse 6. King James Version says, and Peter said, but we... We, Apostle, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. I will read that again. Peter said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. We are looking at one of the secrets. It's not the only secret. We know that they were performing the miracle. They were performing the works of wonders. They were doing these works, this act in the power of the Holy Ghost. Remember the Lord Jesus said, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be my witness. So we know that this was being done in the power of the Holy Ghost. But here in this verse, we see two secrets of the book of Acts. Two secrets. Peter said, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. But in this session, we are looking at the, you know, the role that the word plays in what we see. In the book of Acts. And you remember we finished with a quotation last time that actually was an indictment upon the church today. And I will give you that quotation in a summary form in a second. But J.B. Philip version read it this way. Peter said, then we shall devote ourselves wholeheartedly to prayers and the ministry of the word. We shall devote ourselves wholeheartedly to prayers and to the ministry of the word. Amplifier Classic say, but we will continue to devote ourselves steadfastly to prayers and the ministry of the word. Remember, all of them actually talk about the ministry of the word, and we are going to break into some of this word, the ministry of the word. But each one of this word is very important. Peter said, we will give ourselves continually. The other version say we will devote ourselves wholeheartedly to prayers and then to the ministry of the word. And these are two very important secrets. I'm not going to talk about the prayer aspect tonight. By the grace of God, the Lord may lead us to come. But I want to talk about the ministry of the word. But Peter said we will give. You know that word is an emphatic word. And that is why I read J.B. Phillips. And classic. When he said we will give ourselves, it's an emphatic word. And that means we will do it steadfastly. We will be careful. We will, keep, we, will be, we will carefully keep our heart to this work. This is not something we do half-heartedly because this is key. Because this is central. Because this is important. Peter said we will steadfastly attend to this, to this work and we will carefully keep our heart to this work. And that is why Amplified and Gipophilus say we shall devote ourselves wholeheartedly. This is the secret. The, the, the wholehearted devotion, the steadfast devotion of the apostle to the works of prayer and to the ministry of the word was key to their experiencing the power of the Holy Ghost flowing through them. Now, I want to talk about that ministry of the word. Okay, he said we will we devote ourselves steadfastly to prayers. We are not talking about prayers today, but that is important. He said also, but to the ministry of the word. You know that word ministry is the same word that we get deaconship from. And he's saying that we will steadfastly devote ourselves to the deaconship of the word. Now, what does that mean? Now, the word deacon comes to us as Christians actually from Jewish synagogue. And in Jewish synagogue, they have 
deacons. They have offices of deacons. And the offices of deacons in Jewish synagogue, when you understand their role, it, it actually helps us to understand what Peter was saying here. So the offices of the deacon in Jewish synagogue, from which we actually get the understanding of deacon in the church, the office of deacon is to feed, to nourish, to support, to govern, listen, to discern and give right judgment in things both sacred and civil. And Peter is saying, look, the ministry of the world is very important for us to feed, to nourish, and to support, and to govern, and to discern and give righteousness in things both sacred and civil. So when the Peter was saying, we will devote ourselves to the deaconship of the world. In other words, the proclamation of the word is given to, to be effective, to make it effectual to the soul of the hearers. And Peter is saying, we are going to devote ourselves to proclaim the word of God with the aim, number one, to feed, nourish, support, and govern, with the aim to help the hearer to be able to design and give right judgment in things sacred and civil. And as we've, we faithfully and steadfastly and honestly minister the word, this is what comes out. Obviously, this is all being done in the power of the Holy Ghost. And the apostles knew that this is one of the secrets of their experience. This is one of the secrets of the act is that the apostles and the disciples in the book of Acts, they devoted themselves to the ministration of the word. Now, we are going to come back by the grace of God, not in this, in this part, to actually dig deep into the message. Remember, what we are saying is this, people of God, that the secret of act is actually predicated on the people of God preaching the word of God, the gospel, not just preaching anything, not just preaching their own word, not just doing their own thing, not just preaching, you know, a feel good message, not just preaching, you know, a, a, a get, get, you know, you know, a motivational message, not just preaching their, their own denominational message. No, it is all about preaching. There was a message. There was a message they gave themselves to. There was a message that they proclaimed continually. There was a message that they were proclaiming effectively. And the secret of their success was tied up in the message. And the devil knew that. And the devil raised up a position to try and stop them from preaching that message. The devil tried to stop it. And if, when the devil couldn't stop it, the devil tried to pollute it. But the Apostles knew that the effectual proclamation of this word will bring, will bring nourishment, will bring support, will bring strength, will bring discernment, and the people of God will be able to have wisdom to be able to deal with their, you know, daily issues, both sacred and civil. And the proclamation of that word, obviously, and them giving themselves because they say. The proclamation, the ministry of the word cannot be diverged from the ministry of prayer. Both of them goes hand in hand. A ministry of prayer without the ministry of the word or a ministry of the word without the ministry of prayer will be totally weak, will be powerless. So it's the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. And you can see the connection here. I and yourself must devote ourselves, especially we as ministers, we must devote ourselves just like they did to 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 prayers and to the ministry of the word and really this was the instruction that the lord jesus gave them before he left isn't it and when we read the book of mark chapter 16 and the lord jesus said to them to the apostles go ye into all the world and do what and preach the gospel he that believeth and is baptized that be saved people will only be saved if we preach not just anything if we preach the gospel and i want to trust that the lord is helping us to preach the gospel on this platform Verse 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. You see, we must preach the gospel so that people can believe. If people believe, the signs will follow. The sign will follow the people that believe. The people will only believe if they hear the gospel. You can see how the signs, the work of power is, is, is connected you know, totally connected to us faithfully and steadfastly and continually preaching the gospel. Verse 17, And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, devils they shall speak with new tongues, 
they shall take up serpent, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hand on the sick, and they shall recover. You know, these are the things you and I want to witness. I want to witness this. In my ministry, in my church, I want to witness this. But this is all predicated upon the Holy Spirit walking through the body as we we'll preach faithfully the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 19 says, So after the Lord has spoken to them, he was receiving to heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20, very important. And the apostles did exactly what the Lord Jesus commanded them. Verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere. They went forth and preached the gospel everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word. In other words, the acts of power, the act of the Holy Spirit comes to confirm the word. If there was no word, there was nothing to confirm. You know, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. So this is very, very important for us. And that was why the other time, that was uh, episode 99, we finished with this quotation with, from this gentleman, a Swiss theologian called Emil Brunner. We finished that with this quotation and I've, I've just summarized it here. He said, at every period in the history of the church, the greatest sin of the church and the one which causes the greatest distress is that she withholds the gospel from the world and herself. The weakness of the church lies in the fact that she lacks this living word, that she does not know the reason for her own existence and consequently has no real message for the present situation. Wow, wow, wow. This is a power. Every time I read this again, it's powerful. The living word. The living word. This is this is this is our message for the world. This is our message for the present situation. This is our answer to the current challenges that we face. This is our this is the answer to our problem. But he said the greatest sin of the church in every generation is when we with all the gospel, not just any message, but the gospel. But the gospel is, is a shame and it is painful and sad today that people are preaching another gospel. People are preaching Eastern religion for the gospel. People are preaching motivational preaching for the gospel. People are preaching psychology for the gospel. But those things will not bring, cannot be confirmed, okay? Because there was a message that the power comes to confirm the message, okay? Now, the Power, the manifestation of power is not the message. Healing is not the message. Prosperity is not the message. Deliverance is not the message. There is a message that healing, prosperity, and deliverance come to confirm. And this is very, very, very important. And the devil knows that. And that is why the devil throughout the age has made concerted effort to stop the message in the book of Acts and in our days. And if the message cannot be stopped, is to try and dilute it. Though the devil cannot stop the message, but unfortunately he's had various success down the history of the church in diluting and polluting the message. And that is why, as we read in the book of Galatians chapter 1, when Peter said that, that they were preaching another gospel and he, he uttered a strong word. He said, if any man preach another gospel, even if he's an angel, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed, he said. And that is how serious it is because this is the heart of the gospel. And it is better for me, it is better for a man not to you know, mount the podium than for him or her to mount that podium and preach another gospel and preach a diluted gospel and preach a polluted gospel and preach another gospel. The Bible says there is a judgment, there is a damnation upon such a soul. The Lord will have to help us. And this is what we saw being played out when we read the book of Acts chapter 5. You remember that? When the apostles went out to preach and there was an issue that the devil was unhappy about, okay? And there was an issue that the leaders were unhappy about and they were trying to make sure that they stop. Acts chapter 5. Let's read Acts chapter 5 and we are going to read from verse 27 to 32. I, I believe we read this quickly the last time but let's read it again and when they have brought them that is the apostles remember this was when they put them in prison the angel busted them out and they went and started preaching the angel said go and preach the word of this life because this is where the secret is and then they went to bring them peacefully verse 27 and when they have brought them they set them before the council and the high priest asked them saying did not we straightly command you that you should not teach 
in this name and behold you have filled jerusalem with your doctrine and intended to bring this man blood upon us you see that was the issue they know the issue stop preaching stop the true doctrine stop the true gospel don't preach the gospel preach something else preach psychology preach you know motivational but don't preach the gospel but peter said in verse 29 then peter and other apostles answered and said we ought to obey god rather than men the god of our father raised up jesus whom you slew and hang on a tree, him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are his witness of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. Do you see how it connected the Holy Ghost with the world? The Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth, is the one that opened our eyes to know the truth, and is the one that confirmed the truth, is the one that gave the truth, is the one that helped us to proclaim the truth, and is the one that confirmed the truth. Okay, and we are his witness. And Peter was saying here and said, No, we have to obey God. Now, in this few verse, we are going to look at the content of their message. Now, we are not going to go deep into it today, but we are going to look at the content. There's, there was a message that the apostle preached. There was that message that the apostle preached that the Holy Spirit was confirming. No, and this is very, very important. And one of the things you will see is that as you go through the book of Acts, okay, you remember we talk about these 19 major sermons in the book of Acts. But some of these sermons actually, you know, bring to us, some of these sermons actually outline for us the basic content of the gospel, of the message that they preach. When the apostles started preaching, they preach a basic message that the theologians call kerygma. And as the church grew, as people get born again, then they pushed them through what we call didache. So they preach a kerygma. There is a basic message they preach that people believe, okay? And people get saved by that message. And that simple basic message is what we call kerygma. And we see that over and over and over again in the sermon that we see in the book of Acts. And as people get born again, the Bible says they continue in the apostle doctrines and in the breaking of bread. So people get born again and then they are they are exposed to extended teaching and instruction explanation you remember what we said about manifestation propagation and then explanation so they preach the, the gospel they preach charisma and then people believe that and then people are born again and then they continue in the apostles doctrine they continue in the didache they continue in the extended teaching and uh, instruction of the word of god and what i'm going to do before we round up is to look at the basic content of the charisma when you read through the the sermon what we call the charisma sermon in the book of Acts, you will see this basic content. And listen, when we get born again, we don't stop using, we don't stop the charisma because you need to understand the didache. In fact, I'm going to put that very back on the system again. You need to understand that the didache is built upon the charisma. And this is very, very important. You see, it is the same gospel that saved us, that grows us. That is very important. The didache, is built upon the kerygma. The didache is not separate from the kerygma. Okay, the didache is actually a deeper understanding, a deeper revelation, a deeper insight, a deeper experience of the kerygma. So it is the the the, the message that saved us is not different from the message that grows us. The Bible says that as you have therefore received Christ, so grow you in him. Okay, and this is very, very important. It is the same message. Look, when when you are young, all you juice, all you take is milk. But when you grow up, you don't stop taking milk. You just take milk in a different form. You just take milk with other things. So it's the same thing with the message. The message has not changed. The message is still the message. It's just that there is a building upon the foundation the kerygma is still the foundation of our christian life now i've run out of time today but i'm going to go through the basic content for you of the kerygma when we come back by the grace of god we'll take it off from there when you look at the kerygma sermon the sermon that were preached by the apostles number one you see that there's an emphasis upon jesus 
is the message. Jesus is the message. And their emphasis is that Jesus is the chosen Messiah. is the Messiah of the Old Testament. is the one that the Old Testament was pointing forward to. So their message, their emphasis is that Jesus is the chosen Messiah of God, the one that was promised, the one that was prophesied, that this is the Messiah. Remember when Jesus asked this disciple, whom do you say that I am? Say, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That is their, the first content of their message. The second content is that he was crucified and that he rose again from the dead and that he appeared unto the disciple. We're going to come back. This is the basic gospel. Jesus is the Messiah. He was born. He died. He buried he was he resurrected and he has ascended onto the right side of God. Number three, he ascended onto the right hand of God and that he is now he has received of God the Holy Spirit and he has poured the Holy Spirit down upon the church and that is summoning all to him through the ministry of the church that he, he has ascended into heaven, he's received the Holy Spirit, he's poured the Holy Spirit upon the church and through the church he is inviting all men unto him okay and that finally that this message require a response from the hearer that we should repent of our sin and accept him and then live in the new life which christ is offering now he didn't stop there he's saying that this act of christ and the need for us to receive it this alone is what will prevent us from experiencing the wrath of God, that this alone is the only avenue that will bring put us in the right side of God when the judgment comes. There is a judgment that is coming upon humanity. There is a wrath that is coming upon humanity, that it is you accepting this message and and, and receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior that will save you from the judgment to come. And that there is an urgent need for us as we receive this message and you are born again. There is an urgent need for us to grow in Christ and be conformed to Christ in all things. And be prepared for his second coming. So essentially that is the essential basic content of the kerygma of the kerygma that's the message the herald that's the herald that's the proclamation and that is the message as we're proclaiming that the holy spirit confirm as salvation confirm as healing confirm as as deliverance confirm as prosperity and remember this is still the basic message upon which the didache this is the basic message upon which other messages is built okay there is no other message there is no other foundation any other message that we preach must found their foundation in this message and if you are listening to me today remember there's coming a judgment and the only way out of this is if you receive this message and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, confess your sin, confess your rebellion, run up to him, invite him and he will come. He will save you for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him as I'm preaching this same gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit is there to save you and to, to deliver you and to translate you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Don't delay. Do it today.